Hello and welcome to Lamplighter, day number 15. Today begins with a very unusual account where Jacob's daughter Dinah is violated by a man named Shechem. Shechem, however, wants to make things right. He wants to marry Dinah and have her as his own wife. He is in love with her. He asks his father to bargain with Jacob to try to get Dinah for his wife. When Dinah's brothers, Levi and Simeon, hear of what has happened and how their sister Dinah has been violated by Shechem, they decide to take matters into their own hands. And so when Shechem and his father and the men of Shechem are bargaining with Jacob and his family about whether or not Dinah can be Shechem's wife, Levi and Simeon set a few conditions. Shechem says he's willing to do anything they say. And so Levi and Simeon demand that all the men of Shechem be circumcised as their whole family is, because that's the only way that they can have anything to do with one another. Shechem is so convinced that this is a good relationship and that the family of Jacob can live among them and trade with them and they can marry Jacob's daughters and, da and Jacob's sons can marry their daughters and so on and have a happy relationship with these two groups of people together. They are so convinced that it's a good deal that they convince all the men of Shechem to also be circumcised in accordance with their request. Well, as things develop, they all agree to do that. And while they are recovering from the circumcision, while they are in pain, Levi and Simeon come through the land and completely destroy and wipe out all the Shechemites. And they take their animals, they take all their property as their own possessions. Jacob is upset because this is making a a stench of himself and his family in the land, and he knows that they can't continue to live there because this has put a bad mark against their reputation. So God tells Jacob to go ahead and move his family out of that land. And I think it's interesting, if you look at the highlighted portion of our reading today on page 70, you read, perhaps this is more than a simple call to change circumstances, Perhaps God wants also to draw Jacob's sons away from worshiping the false gods of the area. So apparently it's not a good relationship for them to have in the first place. It is a chance for God's people to be drawn away after false gods. And so this is a split that actually works out in the long run. There are some other interesting things that we read here. God says to Jacob, go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So now we've come full circle. Jacob is going back to Bethel, a place he named the house of God. It was there that he made the vow to God. It was there that he made the vow when fleeing from his brother Esau. Now he is back to Bethel. Now he is reunited with Esau. And now he is reestablishing his relationship with God. And appropriately, at this point, when Jacob builds an altar to God, God renews the promise, the promise that had been made to his grandfather Abraham, to his father Isaac, and also to him. Here is the renewal of the promise. You read it at the top of page 71. God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and community of nations will come from you and kings will come from your body. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you, and I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had talked with him. Jacob called the place where God had talked with him, Bethel. And again, as I mentioned, we've come full circle. Now Jacob is in right relationship with God, now Jacob's family is right where God wants them to be in accordance with the promise made as far back as to his grandfather Abraham. Now the promise has been reaffirmed and everybody seems on track. God continues to work in the lives of his people even when they mess up on a regular basis. That should be an encouragement for us as well. God continues to make promises to us through his word. He continues to keep his promises even when we mess up. And from time to time, if we'll study his word, we'll see that he reaffirms his promises to us 
over and over and over again. Isn't it great to be a follower of God? Isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I hope you have a blessed day.